Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience of listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres to keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Pierre Leveille on the line, and he's president and CEO at Deep South Resources. Pierre, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm uh, very pleased to be with you today. All right, Pierre. So uh, excited to get into today's topic. So we'll get further into uh, Deep South Resources, and I want to hear some updates for, from you on how the project's going and uh, overall, um, overall the, the green movement that we're talking about um, here today. But just to get us started, I mean, just to set the table, um, I'll ask the same question we ask to all our guests when we bring them on, and that's our signature question. So, Pierre, um, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. So that's our mission here. Um, Pierre, what mission matters to you? Well, the, the, main, uh, the main point is twofold, is to be involved in the uh, Green Revolution. It's very important for me, but also, uh, you know, the main one is certainly to create uh, new jobs in uh, the southern region of Namibia, which is a country I love really. Uh, I'm being involved with Namibia since 25 years. I lived in the country for a certain period of time. So uh, it's a little bit like my second home, and for me it's very important. So the Green Revolution is something very important that matters to me, but also creating new jobs uh, in the south, southern part of Namibia is very, very important. That's awesome. Um, love bringing uh, mission-based entrepreneurs and executives on the show to talk about what they do. So um, let's just uh, uh, dive right in. So how did you get um, started really on this path as an entrepreneur in mining? Like, Tell me a little bit more about how Pierre got here. My background is not, uh, you know, technical. I'm not a geologist or a mining engineer. My background is finance, and I started my career as a stockbroker and investment banker. Um, and most of the, the, the funds I was raising uh, were for the exploration industry in the northern Quebec, northern Ontario, and Canada. So uh, I, you know, slowly developed, a, you know, a pretty interesting knowledge about the exploration part of the mining industry, and uh, I, you know, I, I become more and more <laughs> competent, let's say, in uh, in raising money for these kinds of projects, uh, up to a point where uh, I decided at some point to uh, uh, take over the management of a company I was near controlling with uh, with some of my investors, my clients, and uh, the, the first project uh, in the company was a. Uh, a small diamond and gold project in Ghana in West Africa. So I was pretty attracted to uh, Africa. Uh, when I was a stockbroker also, I had quite a lot of, uh, I opened quite a lot of uh, accounts for uh, South African investors. So I had a pretty good network with South African, uh, well, to, you know, high net worth people. So uh, around that network, I started looking for projects and uh, did the first uh, acquisition in uh, in Namibia in 1996. So uh, since 25 years, I'm involved with Namibia. So uh, and since that time, I'm managing, uh, you know, exploration projects, uh, developing funding, some exploration projects in Namibia, uh, also in South Africa. Awesome. Um, so that which brings us to today's topic. So um, first off, tell us a little bit more about Deep South Resources. Uh, Deep South is a, uh, an exploration company listed on the uh, TSX Venture under the symbol DSM and on the uh, 
uh, OTCQB, symbol DSMTF. Um, and uh, our main project is uh, in the southern part of Namibia. It's called Hype Copper. It's a very large deposit, uh, low grade. It's what we call a porphyry copper. And uh, we, uh, uh, up to uh, the month of June, we were developing the project to eventually become a mine. Uh, we have pr produced a uh, preliminary economic assessment in uh, at the end of November 2020, and the numbers were completely awesome. It's, uh, uh, you know, the, at that price of copper of $4 per pound, we were over that today. Uh, the uh, net present value of the project uh, is uh, $1.6 billion U.S., uh, with a capital investment need of $340 million U.S., so it gives you a, uh, uh, a pretty nice uh, internal rate of return of 42% after that. So it's a uh, uh, pretty robust project. The, the reason why it's this thing since a long time, uh, it has been explored by a lot of companies, uh, but mo no, most of the companies were used classical way of extracting the metal, and uh, because the grade is low, uh, it was not, uh, you know, giving, so it was sub-economic. Uh, we were the first company to go t towards some different technologies. Uh, using bio heat leaching, uh, we have been able to show that it works with our project and show that we can develop a project at low capital investment and uh, low operational cost. And then suddenly we, it, it's not subeconomic anymore. It's uh, giving a pretty good return. So that's, uh, that's our main project. We're looking to acquire projects in copper also uh, in other countries. We want to be uh, you know, a little bit more diversified. Uh, recently, we had a setback with that project because the Ministry of Mines in Namibia uh, did not accept to renew the expiration license over that project. Uh, so what we have to do now is to uh, – we're in court in Namibia to ask a review of the decision of the minister. The court recently uh, has seen quite a lot of merit on uh, – our case, so they have blocked the uh, Ministry of Mines to issue the license to anyone else until the final decision is rendered. Uh, but because we have uh, some prominent uh, shareholders who are Namibian, uh, uh, very well placed in Namibia, we also do quite a lot of lobbying. We realize now that uh, most probably a, a mistake or a misunderstanding somewhere, and we're pretty confident we will get the rights back. So at the moment, it's, uh, it's, not the, uh, it's not an easy situation, but we're pretty confident we can turn that around, and uh, we, uh, we look forward to have a very good future with that project. At the time, they uh, decided to refuse the, uh, you know, the license. I think they didn't realize that, but we were having uh, three drills on site with 42 employees working, uh, so we had to retrench these people, which is not a very good idea in the, you know, a part of, the, of Namibia where jobs are very, very important. So uh, we're, we're pretty confident we will turn that situation around. It's certainly a misunderstanding. Where. Awesome. Um, so tell me a little bit more about um, this green revolution and how green technology is playing its role. But the green revolution is very important because, as you may know, it's uh, you know we're we're entering now into uh, electrification of transport. And when I say that, we're not talking only about cars; we're talking trucks, uh, buses. Even I was seeing an, an article yesterday uh, uh, showing that planes are now some planes are uh, can do uh, you know short distances with uh, uh, electric engines. So it's. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, a very deep revolution, but what happens with that is that it, there's a demand in certain commodities uh, that is quite important, like copper. Just as an example, an internal combustion engine car uh, needs about 22 kilo on average of copper, and uh, an electric car is at 85 kilos. So uh, there, there's a serious demand on the uh, on the price of copper, and copper now, <laughs> the situation is that the uh, production is diminishing, uh, you know, every year. Uh, they have not invested, major companies have not invested so much in exploration in the past 20 years. Now they're stuck because there's not a lot of uh, new project coming online when the demand is exploding. So it's, uh, we figure out that for at least the next 10 years, uh, copper will be probably the one of the main, if not the main commodity demand in the world. Uh, concerning that, and it's it's pretty important because we all know that uh, uh, you know with the environment today, it's uh, very important that we modify some of our some of our behaviors. And uh, uh, 
one of them is electrification of transport will certainly help quite a lot in some countries, at least. At least, uh, you know, Northern Europe, United States, uh, Canada will certainly benefit quite a lot of that. So, uh, uh, where for us the Green Revolution uh, is very important, but also that's the area where we're, we're the most involved, you know, in, in uh, exploring for uh, for uh, copper deposit. And so, how how does the um, Haidt copper deposit play kind of a role into this? Like, how do you see that contributing? By uh, it's very, uh, uh, you know, when we uh, we have stopped working in June, we were starting mm-hmm. a feasibility study, and the feasibility study in our in our industry is the last mm-hmm. step before uh, constructing a mine. So, within two years to three years, we would have been able to. Uh, take a decision to construct a mine, and then if we construct the mine, we come into play at a time where the demand is growing and the uh, uh, the supply is going down. So we would be a new supplier that can at least you know play a little bit, play a certain role to bring uh, uh, more copper to the uh, to the demand. And uh, and you know we were talking at that time about 80,000 uh, tons per year of copper. So it's pretty. You know, it's a pretty sizable project. So, uh, so that's where we see our role is to, you know, come into play when the demand is growing and the supply is going down. That's awesome. Um, well, Pierre, this has been really great having you on the show today to learn more about your background, all the great work that you're doing over at Deep South Resources, and um, really just get an update on, on the overall company and, uh, and and what's going on with it. So, I mean, this has been great, and, uh, and your take on the green revolution and why it's important to get in early on. I mean, you're creating jobs, you're creating... Um, you know, you're creating technology in terms of or implementing technology in different areas. I mean, it's just good. It's a great story overall. So happy to bring that to my audience and happy to share. Um, that being said, so Pierre, if somebody is listening to this right now and they want to learn more about Deep South Resources, um, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, there's two ways. The first one is uh, to go to our website, which is uh, deepsouthresources.com. And uh, or you know send an email at info at deepsouthresources dot com or call us at eight one nine three four zero zero one four zero and uh, I'm always happy to uh, answer calls or answer emails. Fantastic. Well, Pierre, again, really appreciate you coming on the show today. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. Hope you learned a lot. If you did, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. We definitely want you to be a return listener and a return visitor. Um, And Pierre, thanks again for coming on. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me on your show. It uh, It was a great pleasure. Have a nice day.